Do you want a six-figure job but don't know where to start or actually how to go about getting one? Stick around in today's video because I'll be teaching you step-by-step -step how you can get a six-figure career. I work in advertising, I have a six-figure job, and I run a six-figure marketing business on the side. So I know exactly what to do, what not to do, and what to avoid, and I'll teach you the best way to go about it without hitting a lot of roadblocks and obstacles. Now keep in mind, only 9% of Americans actually make a six-figure income. It's really easy with social media to think you wanna be a millionaire, a billionaire, but also I think we don't realize actually how good having a six-figure career can be for you. And it's something that I think a lot more people should consider because it's really easy to set these big lofty goals and not realize you can actually make a great living just with a good job. And to jump right into it, number one is developing high value skills. You have to have skills that will be compensated for in a high amount. And now in terms of what industries to go after, typically you hear about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. But honestly, as long as you pursue something you're passionate about, you can make six figures in pretty much any career path. And yes, going in a STEM field will make it easier. Typically, these are roles that you'll make a lot more money in quicker. But it's not to say that you can go down any path you want and make six figures. You absolutely can. For example, I'm in marketing and advertising. Technically, you could say I'm in technology. There are plenty of six-figure and beyond roles in every area of marketing and advertising, no matter if you're in the search engine side, paid advertising, content, and everything in between. So whatever route you go, make sure you're developing really good skills. Make sure you're taking online courses, you're going to school, you're getting certifications, you're reading a lot of content and consuming content on different channels like YouTube, you're doing tutorials and online boot camps. Constantly be improving the skills you have and the value you can offer to the marketplace. Okay, secondly is optimizing your resume. A lot of people have pretty poor resumes, just the basic work, skills, education section, maybe some additional information about them. And you do need all these sections. You wanna have the fundamental parts of a resume. But here's one thing you have to do that's gotten me tons of job opportunities, interviews, and offers. And that's talking about the results you've driven in previous roles. One of the things you can really make your resume stand out with is case studies, data, and numbers based on the projects and the actions you've taken in your previous roles. For example, like I said, I'm in marketing, so on my resume, I'm constantly talking about the revenue I've driven, the increased web traffic, increased conversion rates, growing email lists, the return on ad spend I've gotten, because you can talk about the different responsibilities you've had, but you really wanna talk about the problems you solved and how that actually translated into dollars for the jobs you worked with. Once again, you can switch around these metrics depending on your actual roles and what you're doing, but have concrete numbers in there and talk about the problems you solve. You can also mix in a bit of storytelling. You can say that XYZ company had this problem. They were suffering from low conversion rates on their website. I did conversion rate optimization. I optimized the sales copy and so on. And the conversion rate of the website went up 60%. Just a basic example, but you wanna talk about how there was a problem, what you did to solve it, and then the numbers afterward. You also wanna keep your resume short and sweet. If it can be one page, that's great. Typically it'll be one and a half, maybe two pages max. You don't want too much, but make sure also you're using good bullet points to summarize all the different results you've generated and what you're doing at those roles. Use action verbs and talk about all the different things you were doing. Keep it short and sweet where possible and don't overextend. Thirdly, is developing an online brand. There's no excuse nowadays not to have social media and to be creating content. It's a great way to stand out among other applicants and for recruiters to find you. And when you're posting content online, whether it's on YouTube, your blog, and social media, all of which you should probably have at minimum social media and a blog, I would say, it shows that you're authoritative and credible in your own space. You're becoming a thought leader. You're posting content about something that's relevant to your industry and you're active in it. And it also shows your knowledge and your level of skill if you're publishing content about these things. And it just gives you more brand awareness for people to find you and more opportunities will come of that. I can't even tell you the amount of opportunities I've had just from my blog and my website and me posting content. It's generated me hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's one of the best assets I have to this day. Now, number four, once you've optimized your resume, you're developing skills and you're developing an online presence, now you're gonna be applying for jobs. And you essentially have two different routes you can go. And I've tested both and they can have equal results depending on how much you invest in them. Number one is the mass volume approach. You're gonna be sending out resumes on LinkedIn, Indeed, all these different job boards every single day. You can even read about people sending out 100 resumes a day and having that kind of goal. I would say set a number. Maybe it's five jobs, maybe it's 10 jobs. Set a number and hit that every single day. It'll compound and at that point, it's really just math. You know that if you keep hitting that number, how many interviews you could expect every week, every month, and so on. But there's also something that's a lot more specialized and precise, and that is tailoring the cover letter and the resume to every single application. 
So you find a job that you're interested in and you tailor the resume to that job with certain keywords, roles, and responsibilities to make it more relevant and more likely that you'll actually get a response and an interview. Now we can also do is directly reach out to the recruiter. Technically either method you can do this, but let's say on LinkedIn, you find the company, you then go to that company's page that's hiring and you find the recruiter or the person that's the head of that department and connect with them and reach out to them cold email style. You introduce yourself, you say, hey, I saw they had a job posting for this role. I think I'm really qualified and I could definitely be a good candidate. I'd love to schedule a call or send you my resume. And this is great because you circumvent the whole application process and you go straight to that person recruiting. And a lot of people still don't do this, so it's an easy way to stand out and get a lot more interviews. Number five is nailing the interview because you will start to get a lot of interviews when you follow these steps, but not every interview will go perfect and that's okay. Back when I was going through the interviewing process, what I would do is after each one, I would take notes about what I did wrong, where I could improve, what I did right, and that allowed me to have a better interview again and again and improve it over time. And you'll start to catch little things. Maybe you need to talk more about the results you drove in previous roles. Maybe you say certain words or things very often. Maybe you repeat too many words or phrases. You're a little bit awkward in certain ways. Start improving those over time and then you'll be very confident when you go into interviews and do them really well. You can also look up common questions and things they'll be asking you depending on the role and industry. You can then write down answers and be prepared for that. If you're doing online interviews, this is very easy because you can have your notes and answers ready ahead of time and don't read them word for word, but just use them as inspiration and ideas. And you should also have case studies and examples ready and in your mind because in a lot of bigger roles, they're going to want to know how you led certain teams, how you managed a certain product or channel. They want to know exactly what you did, how you did it, and the results it drove. So just keep those in mind and be confident. Be confident in your voice and how you speak. Be confident in your body language and already think that you have the job and you're the perfect fit. When you go into it with that mindset, it'll really shine through how you speak with them, how you answer questions, and it'll give a lot better of an impression. Okay, last but not least is networking at events. It's actually proven that a majority of jobs are filled through personal connections and networking. That's why if you wanna grow your career or business or side hustle, you have to be physically networking. Go to meetup.com, Eventbrite, or Chamber of Commerce and start attending local meetings on a regular basis. Maybe it's once a month to begin and then you get up to once a week. Just start showing your face locally, getting out there, making connections, and you never know who you might meet. And if you do all these things, I guarantee you, you're gonna be on track to getting a six-figure job. It won't happen overnight. Keep leveling up your skills, learning, getting better at interviews, improving your resume, sending out that resume, and over time, you'll definitely get a lot of interviews and job offers. Just be patient, keep improving, and you'll definitely get what you're after. If you wanna learn more about career, marketing, and business, you can visit my blog and website. I have free courses and other resources on there that you may enjoy and pull value from. Feel free to comment down below or email me if you have any specific questions about this, and I'll see you in the next video.